Good afternoon and welcome to the Lunchtime Express with Enrico Alfonso. Joining me today is the amazing actor and apparently thrive athlete, Langley Kirkwood. Welcome, Langley. Thanks so much, Enrico. Thanks for having me on. I uh, don't know so much about the triathlete part right now. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, been doing a lot more. I'd love to know. <laughs> it's listed, your man. It's one of your, it's one of your legendary accomplishments. Um, hmm. All right, great. So if you could tell everybody at home um, a quick summary in your own words of what this movie is about and, you know, what they can expect from the movie. Yeah, absolutely. So... Um, Collision is a very fast-paced, nail-biting thriller drama set in present-day South Africa in Johannesburg, um, very much set against the current socio-political backdrop. And although the film uh, aims to entertain and keep uh, the viewers on the edge of their seats, it certainly uh, doesn't pull its punches in terms of a commentary on our current challenges and current climate in the country. Lovely. Wow. Okay. And. Oh, and the show is airing on Netflix, <laughs> exclusively <laughs> on Netflix, on Youth yes, Day. June Netflix 16th. South African original. We love that. So, okay. Why don't you tell everybody about this? What's different from the other productions that you worked on when compared to this Netflix production? You know, how is it different um, from yeah. everything you've worked on? Um, well, you know, one of the reasons that I was drawn to this project was because I'm playing a South African character and um, purely because I, I suppose I've spent a large part of my, the last 10 years of my life either working in the States or working on American productions. This was, you know, it was a really, it was really nice. It was really appealing and attractive for me to come back and play a, you know, a South African character on a purely South African project, you know, the other than our amazing director, Fabian Martorell, the, the entire cast and crew is local. And uh, so we were super stoked that Netflix uh, was able to get behind the production in this way and support us, um, you know, in terms of showcasing South African talent, South African storytellers, uh, yeah, with a, a South African cast and crew filmed entirely on the streets of Johannesburg during a very challenging period of time. Um, and that was, I think, during the third wave or was it the second wave of, of COVID? Middle of winter this time last year in Johannesburg. So we had, we had, you know, we had to deal with the challenges presented by COVID lockdown and curfew um, and having to shoot on the streets after curfew every night. And wow. very often, very often, uh, thank you, ESCOM. We had to deal with rolling blackouts <laughs> and load shedding as well. Oh, <laughs> so when you're shooting shooting scenes that involve traffic lights and suddenly all the traffic lights then downtown disappear. <laughs> um, oh, <laughs> you can imagine the, 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 the frustrations that we had to deal with, but nevertheless, we managed to get the film uh, not just completed on time, but uh, we're really proud of the results. We're very happy with the results. Um, in terms yeah, of you know bringing beast, bringing it home beast. under budget and on time, it's uh, absolutely but, amazing. From what I've seen, it's absolutely amazing. I I can't believe you went through that, and the uh, I can't even imagine the COVID tests that you probably had to yeah. do all the time while on set. That's not a pleasant experience for anybody. You know, it's no, not you know, I'm not going to dwell too long on on that because we had to talk about about collision. But, you know, I think it is something that, that people in the television and film, film industry around the world are, you know, having to adjust to. Um, mm. And it's just, it's just part and parcel of the job now. And, and we all know that, you know, safety comes first and we want to look after everybody. And Netflix are no exception. They're very good with their, with their COVID protocols. And, you know, they want to look after the, the people who are, you know, producing content for them, which is, you know, obviously not just looking after their people. It's just good business sense as well. Yeah, because um, yeah. you know, getting getting infections on set delays delays the schedule and 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 makes the budget go go crazy. So it's 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 just good business sense, and it's looking after everyone's health. So everyone's pretty much on the same page when it comes to to getting things stuck up their noses on a regular <laughs> basis. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, can you tell us about your character in this movie? How? How did you get into preparing for that? And 
what's yeah. his role in this movie? How is he, um, you know, thrust into this world, into Johannesburg at that period? Yeah, so I suppose, you know, Johan Kruger is the protagonist of the film. He's certainly not your traditional hero. He's something of an anti-hero. He's a very flawed individual. Um, you know, this is a man who's, who's uh, I suppose, in, through the eyes of many, through, you know, if I, I were to look at this guy, I would say here is, a, um, you know, a, a racist who is living a life of privilege and has lived a life of privilege and has a certain amount of entitlement that goes along with that. Um, and, you know, that coupled with his, his, his burning desire and need to provide and protect, uh, provide for and protect his family, he makes some bad choices along the way. And basically the film starts and uh, it covers a 36 hour period uh, in the course of the 99 minutes of the film. And, and basically, you know, we see during the course of that film, uh, basically it's time to, to, to pay up for, for Johan because these, these bad decisions that he's made uh, come back to bite him and he has to face up to them. And then it's, just, it's decision time as to whether or not he's going to come clean about that and try and make amends for those bad decisions and find some kind of redemption. Um, but also he has to fight to save the life of his daughter. Yes. So, uh, that was one thing I found really compelling in the movie was the character mm. development. You know, it wasn't mm. so stagnant in some places as I found some other South African um, sort of uh, films in the past. But this one was really gripping and you mm. could see the character actually developing over the course of the storyline, which is, which is what I really enjoyed. Um, so yeah. is it Zoe Sneer? Am I saying it right? Zoe Sneerden. Zoe Sneerden plays oh, our daughter. What a brilliant. Absolutely. And this is her first acting role, right? It is. Uh, wow. She's a very talented, fine artist, Zoe. Um, and so obviously, you know, she doesn't just, doesn't just stick to, to fine art as her chosen art form. She's experimenting and is, as you can see, extremely talented in, in various art forms. So acting is, is no exception. She's, uh, she's a really talented, hardworking, really, really hardworking individual, and I have nothing but the utmost respect for her. Um, the entire cast uh, worked their asses off uh, in this film. We had a really challenging schedule, and uh, I've mentioned already some of the challenges that came with shooting the film on the streets of, of Josie, and so, you know the entire cast and crew work their butts off on this and I, you know i can't praise them highly enough i i always love to praise that because i know there's so many moving parts that go into making a movie the endless yeah. hours and the, the moving parts are just thousands of people just working around the clock um to make yeah. something happen you know things that are just behind the scenes that nobody ever yes. sees but it just goes yes. like set building and creating the right uh, lighting is a whole other story, yeah. getting the sound right. It's just so many yeah, I think, parts, you're right. And the cinematography on this film was, you know, is, is, is Absolutely, yes, I love that so much. Yeah. International it's quality, fantastic. that's what I love. Yeah. I always miss that with South African films, but Netflix is like really bringing it to a whole new level. That's what I love mm. about it. Um, it really feels, like you're watching an international film. You have that quality, you have that sound quality. Um, and yeah. you can really just immerse yourself in the movie. You're not stuck worrying yeah. about the technical qualities. You're just in the movie enjoying the story. Okay, so you yes. mentioned that you mentioned that he is a father. He is trying to um obviously save his daughter in this in this movie. Um mm. but what drew you to the character? I know you said you 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 want you you jumped at the opportunity to come back and play a character in South Africa, um, and you know enjoy those, I mean and 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 raise those levels. But what like drew you to the script to say, wow, I really um, want to tell the story. You know, I I love playing characters that are relatable. I love playing characters that are three dimensional and not a stereotypical presentation of you know some kind of caricature. And I think. That's something that this film achieves is that it, it, it presents really nicely rounded characters across the board. There, there are no stereotypical 
heroes or villains in the story. Every one of the characters here has their flaws. They all make mistakes. They, uh, they are, there is humanity. We can see the humanity um, and the relatable humanity in all of them, which, uh, you know, this is, so it's, so it's presenting real characters. And Johan is no exception. You know, here's a, a guy that I can relate to. I certainly grew up um, knowing many people like Johan. I, I, I went to school with guys like him. I have, you know, I have associates who remind me of him. There's certainly elements of Johan that I've drawn uh, from in, in, in many people that I know. And so, you know, that was, that was, that was something that I, I wanted to be able to play a character that I could get inside whose head and heart I could get inside and, and allow the audience to, to both empathize and sympathize for him, but at the same time being able to see the flaws and see uh, flaws that as South Africans, they can identify and go, yeah, I know this guy. Um, but, also, but also feel sorry for him because ultimately mm. these are the, this is how we, we can come together. And I think we have to. We have to see and love each other for our flaws as well as our good qualities. And, and, and you know, also own that we all have flaws. None of us are perfect. Yes. Uh, that we, and, and we are all works in progress. And so, you know, what, what was great about the character of Johan is that he goes on a real journey during the course of the film. And he has to make some decisions and he has to make some, you know, decisions that, that lead to, to personal growth within the short sp space, a uh, time span. Um, and ultimately, you know, as the film draws towards its climax, you know, he has to make some, some big decisions. And, uh, and I guess we'll leave it up to the audience as to, <laughs> as to whether or not he redeems himself. That's one thing I'm really hoping for this movie. As you mentioned, it's an eye opener. I'm really hoping mm -hmm. people uh, find a way to actually share in that union of understanding that it's not just about xenophobia. It's not just about racism. It's not just about different uh, colors, different religions. It's we're all still human at the end of it. We all still have our own motivations. We still have yeah. our own humanity that we deal with yeah. day in and day out. It's not just, oh, hey, he's a racist. End of story. Um, end yeah. of like full stop done. You know, it's not just um, somebody's poor. And then that's the end of the story, full stop. It's not just that this guy's uh, another, that, uh, that that guy's a villain. You know, what made yeah. him a villain? Why is he a villain? Why is he acting out this way? Um, and I'm really hoping that that is something that people sort of um, find understanding in. Because we're not yes. always reflective of the things we do. You know, no, we can just go we carry are, on in life. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you realize that there is your fault. There is something that you're doing that's not necessarily great in the grand scheme yeah. of things, uh, yeah. which is, like you said, I love that that showed that. I think what the film highlights as well is that we're living in a seriously dysfunctional time in a seriously dysfunctional world. And, and South Africa is no exception. You know, we, we live in a dysfunctional, corrupt uh, country that is sick. Um, and there are so many layers um, to our society right now that need intervention and need, and need work. And, and so hopefully what this film does and what it can do for all, both South African and international audiences is to open the door to empathy. And mm -hmm. hopefully empathy can open the door to understanding and forgiveness. Yes. Because, you know, we, we, can't, we can't move forward as a country without... Uh, a radical amount of listening to each other and a radical amount of forgiveness because it's become quite evident and quite clear that the traumas of the past have not been swept under the table. They have not been properly dealt with and they need to be looked at and they need to be talked about. And um, so it is my hope that this film can go some way towards starting conversations that heal our country. Wow, beautifully said, man. I love that. And uh, I would just, if we could just stop all the, because we've become a, we've become a culture now of just cancelling things. You know, I'm sure you've mm -hmm. heard of that cancelling, just get cancelled. Like oh. people just get cancelled. So as soon as they do I'm something, old, but I'm not wrong, that old. 
<laughs> no, I didn't mean it that way. Please don't take it that way. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't. I am, I am uh, aware of Kesby culture. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I just I feel like we've become too quick with that. As soon as something is bad or, and I get it. I get the need of where it came from because people mm-hmm. weren't listening at a time. Um, yes. But now it's just become you know guilty until guilty you know it's like it's never innocent anymore it's just cancel cancel yeah. and you're done yeah um yeah and you're right it's so nice to actually see behind the curtain of just being a person and he still has to make his decisions um and yeah. from his perspective that's what he knows yeah it's not like he's exposed to just uh things showing him that he's wrong all the time that's what he grew up with that's how he lives it's not like he no. can just turn a corner and say, wow, I never noticed that. Well, you know, I think we're all very much conditioned by how we, by how we grow up, the circumstances that we grow up in. And, and it takes an exceptional kind of human being to rise above certain, uh, you know, certain challenges. And, you know, I'm, I haven't presented Johan as an exceptional human being by any stretch of the imagination. He is very much an everyman. You know, and and that's you know what I suppose one of the things that drew me to this character is that he is a an ordinary South African who finds himself in uh, extraordinary circumstances, and seeing how he he will react is interesting because it you know it, it, he he has certain challenges that he has to rise to or not, mm-hmm. and the question is will he rise to them, and um, and so that was certainly something that I, I enjoyed exploring in the character of Johan. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, can't, okay, I, I'm, I'm extremely proud of Collision and uh, I can't wait for the world to see it. Uh, and, uh, and, and to, to hear how, you know, the conversations that get started as a result of everyone seeing it. Yes, I'm looking forward to that. I have all my videos prepped. I'm going to be asking some tough questions and see how people engage on them um, and Excellent. hopefully get some good conversations started. Okay. So, um, lastly, I would just like to know from you, if there was one nugget, one wisdom that you could share with everybody um, who was in the creative industry, who wants to get out there, who wants to get their no- name known, but also who wants to tackle these amazing projects, especially in South Africa, you know, what would you yep. have to say to them? Um, one step at a time. Just keep going in the right direction and do the work mm. you know oh. the, it, it, it's all it's a quite a simple formula um you, you really as long as you you put in the work and you keep going in the right direction it might take 20 days it might take 20 years but you will succeed um and it's you know the uh, that's i that, it's that simple really no, I love it because the keep going is probably the hardest thing yeah. for anybody to do, you know, especially yeah. in the creative industry. I mean, I'm sure you faced with a lot of auditions where, um, you know, you get rejected and there's a, in the creative industry, you get rejected quite a lot. Um, is there a yeah. way that you deal with that? You yes. Know, you know, when I was living, I was forward. living, um, when I was living in LA, I was, I was actually renting the, the garden kind of garden cottage or the back house of uh, a director friend of mine. And she actually said to me, you know, you have to reframe this when you, when you get, become despondent after, you know, doing a bunch of auditions and, and, not, and not landing any of them, is that you have to reframe what you do for a living. You're not acting for a living, you're auditioning for a living, because that's where the work comes. That's where you have to actually put your, your focus. And then with, and, and, and just do it for the sake of the work and enjoying the work. And as soon as you've done each audition, you let it go. And if a, if a, if a job comes, it's simply because you were, you were the right person for that. It's not about whether or not you were good enough. It's simply about whether or not you were the right person for that specific job. And when each job does come your way, you've got to receive it as a gift. Because that is not the work. The work is the auditioning, the audition process. That's, that's the work. And then when you, do, when you do get the gift of a job that comes through, your work then is the preparation. Mm. And, and I suppose I've used this analogy before, but that it is very much like training for a, a, 
an Ironman or a long distance uh, event. And it is that you've got to put the work in uh, and put the long, the long hours of preparation in so that when you are ready to race or when you get to set, you just fly and have fun and play. And you can be creative and you can just leave nothing out there. <laughs> Wow, man. I love that analogy. That is brilliant. Thank you so much. for. Hey there, I'm Langley Kirkwood. I play Johan Gresa on the film Collision, which airs only on Netflix worldwide on Youth Day, June 16th, 2022. And you are listening to Hata FM. Wow, man. That was brilliant. I love it. What an awesome take. Absolutely brilliant, man. Well done. I love it. Um, excited to see the movie, excited to see Collision, um, excited yeah. to see all the fan reactions. And yeah. to, like we said, hopefully have more yeah. conversations about this and have it be an eye opener. So yeah. thank you so much for joining me today, uh, Langley. I really appreciate it from everybody here at HFM and from me personally, um, just that you gave us your time for today. It's really amazing, man. Thank you been an absolute pleasure, Enrico, and thanks for the support. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on Thursday, June 16th. <laughs> yes, and many, and many more Netflix projects, man. Good luck for everything and have a wonderful week, man. Good luck. You with. too. <laughs> thanks awesome. so much. Man. Okay. I'm Langley Kirkwood and you are listening to ATAR FM.